In this lesson, we'll analyse the popularity of the Nazi regime uh, and ask, did most people in Germany benefit from Nazi rule? And obviously, if people did benefit from Nazi rule, the consequence would be that the regime was popular. So, we need to actually look at the question itself, uh, break the question down. Which period of Nazi rule are we referring to? Obviously, Hitler gets power in January 1933, certainly he's Chancellor then, and he's consolidate his, consolidated his dictatorship by August of 1934. Then, though, by 1936, you've got the four-year planning action. In 1939, the war breaks out. At first, it's going well, although later on, obviously, the war is lost. So which period of Nazi rule do we talk about? Generally, there's going to be more popularity pre-war, and certainly in the early stage of the war, while it's going well, but the popularity of the party declined, obviously, as the war started to go badly, and many Germans have suffered as a consequence. Which group of Germans are we talking about? Some benefited. Mainly Nazi party members benefited more. Uh, ordinary Germans benefited in some ways too, although in other ways their lives didn't improve that much and even deteriorated in, in standard. Uh, what do we mean by benefit as well? Is it simply having a job or is it improved standard of living in terms of access to consumer goods and so on? So we need to say, how, what do we mean by benefit? Uh, so certainly something that is true is that Hitler himself personally was popular with the majority of Germans until well into World War II. But does this mean the Nazi regime in general was popular? Well, not necessarily. Many people saw Hitler uh, in a very positive light, very popular, but the regime itself, they didn't like as much. Certainly at the local level, they would grumble about things, but would see that was sort of separate from Hitler's personal popularity. Well, I'll keep looking at employment and workers now. So, if you remember, one of the key Nazi messages was uh, to provide a work and bread. And a priority, once they're in power, was to reduce unemployment. Uh, and this was largely achieved through re uh, rearmament, uh, building up, uh, excuse me, rearmament in factories. So factories producing weapons, tanks, planes, uh, guns, and so on. Uh, and conscription both into the army and into public works schemes. This was organised by the German Labour Front. This was the Nazi organisation which had replaced trade unions. So this would organise workers and job centres and direct unemployed workers to jobs. The public works themselves were things like afforestation, that means planting trees basically, water cons conservation and irrigation, as well as building houses, barracks for soldiers, autobahns, autobahns and motorways. Now, if you look at the figures, we can see a massive reduction in unemployment throughout this period. And that would certainly be evidence for uh, people benefiting from, Nazi regime, from the Nazi regime. Yet we also need to question that as a lot of this was achieved through conscription. Some of these public works jobs uh, under the right labour service were really very badly paid. Um, Jews and women were also not counted in the unemployment statistics. So there was undeniably and certainly a very large reduction in unemployment, but we need to be careful with believing the statistics as they stand, as you know, women and Jews were not counted in them. Uh, so this is a, a Nazi party membership card here. Uh, if you look at party membership, again that would seem to be a key indicator, a key piece of evidence Surely, if membership of the Nazi party is rising, and you can see that it was in 1933, just under a million, by 35, 2 million, 5 million by 1939, this would seem to provide strong evidence that the regime was popular, uh, people were benefiting from it. The thing is, though, people joined the party, not just because they believed in Nazi ideals, certainly many, almost certainly did, but others may have joined uh, to get access to better jobs, uh, better status in society, better access to the necessities of life, especially under rationing, so access to food and fuel and so on. Um, and this, obviously, jobs were created that would benefit those that could get them in things like the German Labour Front. Again, this is the organisation which replaced trade unions. And you've got 45,000 paid officials, all of them Nazi party members. So, again, party membership rose, which seems to indicate popularity. But many of the people that joined could well have been joining just to improve their own 
chances in life and, and the chances in, for their family as well. Uh, very much jobs for the boys as well. So if you're not a Nazi party member, you may not, you may be denied the best jobs. I mean, this whole jobs for the boys, nepotism, giving, making sure your friends get the better jobs and better opportunities and better contracts and things like that. This is an aspect which is in almost every society, in Thai society, British society, societies everywhere, this whole jobs for the boys idea. And obviously the network that you need to be in for the best opportunities was the Nazi party. So in that sense, you would benefit if you're a party member, but perhaps not so much if you're not a member of the Nazi party. The economy and living standards. Living standards, the economy, these are very much going to reflect on the popularity of the regime, whether that's, a, and this is still obviously true today, whether you're living in a dictatorship or a democracy, the popularity of the regime is also largely going to be determined by the health of the economy, and standards of living. Well, ironically, small businesses suffered. If you remember during the time the Nazis were trying to get power, they really target those lower middle class small business owners, promising to break up big department stores. And a lot of small businesses liked the Nazi message and voted for the Nazi party. Yet, at, when the party is actually in power, many small businesses actually did suffer. This is because the economy, the manufacturing economy, was geared towards the production of weapons under the leadership of Hermann Goering and his four-year plan. Very many, many factories were converted into weapons production facilities. And that consequently meant if factories are producing guns and tanks and armoured personnel carriers and military aircraft and so on, they're not producing consumer goods. You don't walk into a 7-Eleven or a Tesco's and go and buy a tank or an anti-aircraft gun. Uh, so it does mean small businesses are suffering. They simply don't have consumer goods to sell because factories are making weapons, not making consumer goods, which can be sold for profit. Uh, they also had difficulty, certainly with foodstuffs as well, and obviously many small businesses many small convenience stores would be selling foodstuffs, but they weren't allowed to put their prices up because of control of food prices. So again, difficult for many of them to make a profit, a lack of consumer goods, and they couldn't put food prices up. Furthermore, in general, this is just for everybody, a shortage of fats, things like butter and cooking oils, that might not seem to be a very significant thing if you live in a fairly affluent household today, but not having uh, cooking fats and cooking oils is really going to impact on the quality of your food and your diet. So in that sense, uh, it, living standards declined. What you had as well under the pressure of autarky, which is where the German economy was trying to become independent from imports, well, imported things might be things like coffee or tea or other things like that. And what there were is there were, there were substitute or synthetic replacements, you know, the air sats, substitute goods. Again, so it's things like coffee or even fuel for your car. Synthetic ones were not as good as the real thing. So in that sense, the quality of living declined. Also, if we look at the economy and living standards, clearly uh, unemployment had been largely eliminated because of rearmament and conscription, but wage rates were held down, basically, as the as the Nazis basically wanted to achieve the, the, the cheapest possible rearmament uh, and, and weapon production. So for workers, there wasn't really much rise in living standards. And whereas before the Third Reich gained power, they might use trade unions to bargain with their employers, maybe even with a set of strike, well, there were no trade unions, so there was therefore no bargaining power on behalf of workers. So in that sense, workers had lost bargaining power. And so they didn't have a really large increasing living standards. Actually, as the war went on and, and demands for production increased, uh, wor uh, working hours increased uh, a lot. Leisure time. So the Strength Through Joy program. Uh, it did try and do some things as well. That the, the party, they tried to improve safety in factories and food, etc. And the Strength Through Joy program uh, offered benefits such as free sporting events, theatre tickets, uh, leisure activities in general, so cheap holidays were on offer. Now that seems fantastic. Uh, even cruises to the Canaries, which would be ordinarily two weeks wages for the average working person. However, many of the best opportunities were reserved for Nazi party personnel. So again, if we revisit that question, 
uh, how popular was the regime? Did people benefit? Well, certainly if you're a member of the Nazi party, you would have access to better job opportunities and better leisure opportunities through the KDF. Although everybody benefited, but every worker did benefit to some extent from some of these leisure activities offered. Uh, people in the countryside, uh, rural communities in general were pleased uh, with the Nazis' accession to power, certainly before the war anyway. Uh, under the Labour Front, uh, many Hitler youth were sent into the countryside and so there was a source of free labour for farmers. Furthermore, compared to the agricultural recession of the 1920s, generally standards of living throughout the 1930s increased uh, for, for farmers and their families. Um, again, cheap holidays because the, uh, this idea of blood and soil was central to Nazi propaganda. It really elevated uh, the German farmer in propaganda as this heroic figure. And certainly many farmers responded to that, you know, to, the, to this uh, depiction of themselves as farmers. Uh, for women as well, uh, they had the opportunity to travel beyond uh, the village. Even though there was this Nazi emphasis on uh, Kinder Kirschkuchen, sorry for my terrible German, uh, uh, kitchen, church and children, because of the Nazi women's organisations, women actually had more opportunities in these very traditional village areas to actually travel beyond the village and cross class boundaries, meet people they wouldn't otherwise have the chance to meet. And so in that sense, uh, many women were actually liberated from traditional village life because of the opportunities provided by Nazi women's organisations. Uh, throughout, uh, as the war uh, began, certainly though, uh, in common with other women, there was a transformation uh, in the propaganda away from the emphasis of mother and housewife trying to get women into work. We'll look more at that in a subsequent video lesson. Uh, Hitler's popularity, as we've already stated, Hitler remained personally very popular. Uh, many reasons for it. His authoritarian leadership was seen by many as a replacement for weak and ineffective democracy, which had seemed to fail in the light of the Great Depression and the divides between uh, left and right. Uh, unemployment had been lowered, so he brought, he brought uh, many more jobs. German honor, German honor seemed to have been restored. The 1936 Berlin Olympics were a huge success. Uh, seemed to show a very effective German organization. The Rhineland had been remilitarized successfully in 1936, part of the scrapping of the hated Treaty of Versailles. So it seemed uh, like many Germans, like a miracle uh, after the very difficult times, the, the economic turmoil of the 1920s and 1930s and the Great Depression. It seemed like uh, Hitler had sort of personally managed to steer Germany towards a miraculous success. Certainly, although we're looking pre-war and during the early successes of the war there. So in summary, uh, unemployment did decrease, although the figures are a little bit suspect due to the fact that women and Jews were not counted. Uh, party membership, if you're a party member, you would benefit more from the regime. Uh, and this increase in party, party membership will partly reflect uh, popularity of the, of the regime itself, but will also reflect the better opportunities that party membership would bring in terms of jobs, etc. Uh, in terms of the quality, uh, the lack of consumer goods and quality goods, uh, there's a decline really, obviously, in that sense, and that makes small businesses suffer. Uh, wages and living standards did not really increase. In fact, as 1937 uh, approached and 1939 and the war, they actually declined really in terms of, uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me, in terms of working conditions in factories, uh, long working hours, etc. Uh, the KDF, the Strength Through Joy organisation, did try to provide leisure opportunities uh, to people and they did benefit all Germans to some extent, although again better if you were a Nazi party member. Uh, generally, uh, before the war, rural communities, certainly in Protestant uh, northern Germany, uh, the regime was quite popular, it idolised farmers in the propaganda and there was certainly a recovery compared to the agricultural repression of the 1920s. Hitler himself, definitely very, very popular um, throughout the 1930s uh, and even into the early part of the war, although that doesn't necessarily reflect popularity with the regime itself. So I hope you made some effective notes there and good luck with